picked the wrong week to quit sniffing glue. But Brando's got what plants crave. It's got electrolytes. <clears throat> well, welcome back. It's Monday again, and uh, this week I hope to get a lot done. Got the big, tedious part of the Excelsior done, which is as taking that saucer. Always turns out great, but it is a long road to get there. Uh, this week we turn our attention to the engines. And I gotta tell you, I painted these with the transparent blue that you that, that most people use, which is the Tamiya light blue. Um, again, I have always wondered why these these were even made clear to begin with because they're ne they were never lit up, so uh, it's no, it makes no sense. Anyway, I think I'm going to try to strip this out and repaint them. Uh, I'm going to try to see if I can relieve some of that uh, clear blue. It's painted from the inside, so if I can't, I can always paint a different color of blue on the outside and, and call it done. So uh, I'm going to try cleaning them out and see how far I get with that. And then we will be uh, doing the serious work on getting the pylons and the engines painted. And that's really pretty much it because this section is mostly done. Um, some detailed painting needs to be done. And the saucer is mostly done, except for the detail painting and decals. So uh, we're we're we don't have that much to do. I mean, it's uh, some simple construction, and we'll be we'll be there. And I really want to get on to the uh, Batwing and the Proteus. And the comments from my channel are any indication. So do a lot of you. So uh, that's what we're gonna do. So um, let me concoct something. I'm going to try to get some window cleaner, maybe some uh, uh, that purple power stuff and soak these and see how they turn out. Okay, since the last time you saw the uh, saucer, I have removed the last of the, de uh, the templates from the bottom. And now you can see the, the two colors of the blue ring going on underneath there and uh, how those panels all look and now it's uh, and I've also sprayed it with a coat of satin to kind of give it a unifying gloss and now it's ready for detail paint and uh, then a high gloss for decals and then a flat coat over top of that so same with the top you uh, you paint the details in whichever details you're going to paint and then you gloss it and decal it and then you flatten it back down and you can see, yes, I am working on the bat plane. It's on the it's on the operating table. Okay, that was so quick and easy. It was it wasn't even funny. That was maybe about oh three to five minutes in a in a bucket of purple stuff, and a quick rinse, and all the blue is gone. So now I am free to repaint these as I wish. Well, the good news just keeps coming. I, uh, in addition to getting back to work on this, I am getting the trim. The finished trim carpenters are here today, and they are going to be putting the uh, the doorways in and things like that. So I can't wait to show you that when they are finished. Yay! Good morning. Well, it's Tuesday, and um, this is the result of yesterday's work. I could not get in here after they finished last night because literally it was too dark. It had they started about oh. 1030 ish and finished around 630 ish but uh, all of the edges have trim on them now and everything is ready for paint all the closet doors are nicely trimmed out nice and smooth oh, I did these ones don't be giving credit to everybody else because I did those ones but the windows have a nice casing around them the baseboards are in and we are ready for paint okay it is Tuesday and if you can tell by the sound in the background the plotter is plotting which means an order has come in which means happy days for me uh, I have gone back and repainted the inserts for the top of the Excelsior engines they were a uh, Tamiya clear blue like these I didn't like it I put dipped them in the purple cleaner to get rid of it and now I've come up with a color that is much better letting that dry also I had neglected to paint the back of the uh, impulse deck that little upswept curve so I'm taking care of that this morning and 
uh, starting to do little detail painting like that blue hatches under there and uh, let's see what else was there there was oh um, the silver in here and on the bridge and let's see where else there was some other silver oh it was on the impulse deck right there so uh, doing little touchy things there getting ready to uh, do the um, wide scale painting on the engine uh, assembly so let's uh, get, let's continue with this nonsense shall we well welcome back it is Wednesday and um, amongst other things I have got the primers uh, and the painters in today actually they'll be priming and, and caulking and doing all that stuff and then tomorrow they'll be back to put finished color on so while that is kind of going on I am ceasing normal work I uh, wanted to show you where I was on the Excelsior. Uh, I've got the neck on and I've got the shuttle bay cover on in place with the little shuttles in there. Aren't those cute? Um, but I put a coat of the clear uh, sealer on it so as to get it ready for decals. And I also uh, have been working on the saucer. Uh, remember, I've forgotten to paint those two areas, so I took care of that. Did some detail painting on the planetary sensor. Popped the bridge in place. Uh, it's ready for its decal. And uh, I want to give this one last shot of clear, and then it's ready for its decal. So we're coming down to the, uh, to the finish on those two sections. I cleaned out the uh, blue that I had on here and repainted inside with a nice teal that I'm going to seal from the inside so that I don't scratch it by mistake and then we'll be down to this it is uh, I've also put some of that new teal color around here to kind of break up the blue that I had on there before but we're almost ready to paint the engines and that will bring uh, the um, Excelsior down to a, a screeching finish and uh, I've also did some work on the bat plane it's in the other room because it's huge and takes up too much space but I was uh, did work on the landing gear and uh, got those kind of finished and glued in place so that it could sit up on landing gear and not have to be balanced precariously. But um, uh, in the midst of all this, I got a huge order from Steve, so I am taking care of that and getting that packaged and ready to go. So um, don't know how much of disruption, disruption the painting is going to be, but hopefully I'll have something really nice to show you at the end of the day. Um, said this before but we got a color or a carpet color solidified getting the closet doors um, getting those picked out and getting those ready to go I got the a very nice little uh, access cover for the uh, crawl space under the house that came today a much nicer job of that than I was expecting I was expecting plain old piece of board with a fragment but it, uh, uh, what turned out to be is quite neat and I will show you that uh, uh, oh probably either today or tomorrow well good morning it is Thursday and as you can tell by the buckets on the floor uh, the painters were here yesterday and yes they not only primed but they put the first coat of the color on the walls uh, which I will show you now yes it looks like a black trim with a medium gray and then a light gray and then a white ceiling um, like I said, this is the first coat, and they will be back today to finish. And then we are dangerously close to getting carpet and electricity and finish. I can't wait until there's an actual ceiling fan hanging from there and actual track lights hanging from there. But uh, before they get here this morning, I thought I'd do a quick walk around. And there's the closets and the black step which leads me back into the other room with the painting tarp up you can see and light switch and all that fun stuff so uh, we should see final coats of paint on here today and welcome back we are finally working on the engines of the Excelsior the warp engines and specifically the fins that go on the back and uh, I've gone ahead and painted those blue and now I'm covering them up to keep them from the gray paint that will go on top. 
I've got them marked out on the sheets T and B for top and bottom. These being the top, obviously, and these being the bottom. Um, so let's go ahead and get these finished up. Well, the painters have just left, and you may it may look a little uneven, and it's only because it is not completely dried yet. So there are spots that are looking blotchy because the paint dries at different speeds. Um, but that's the final paint. Next stop, carpeting. Yay! But uh, yep, yep. Looking good, coming together. Well, back at the Excelsior, I'm starting to put down the masks that go around the pylons and over some detail on the pylons. And uh, it's kind of tricky. I worked out this one, so I'll go ahead and describe how I do this one. Okay, it appears to me that this is the best way to go about uh, masking off your pylon. You take this shape here, which kind of looks like a uh, an apostrophe, and there's the opposite ones. They go both ways. So you put this put this edge. Um, where you want the blue to stay and you simply fold that around and then you knock this little nub and stick it down to this edge which we are going to now cover with one of the thin strips to give you your nice blue edge. Okay having laid this one down and overlapping on, on the uh, apostrophe piece I am going to, I did the same thing here. I just laid this down and I just lined it up against this plating to give me just the amount of blue reveal that I want to keep. And now I'm just going to flap this over here. And I can't, of course, doing this with one hand, line that up with the, uh, with an X-Acto blade. Okay, on the top side of the uh, pylon, I'm going to take this piece here You'll see a few of them on the sheet like this. But what it's designed to do is start at the bend, uh, start at that little crook right here. Starts right there at that edge. Again, you line it up with how much white reveal you think you're going to want to have between this panel and the blue edge. And the little notch there should land right about at the end of the... Uh, of where the pylon bends up and then you just fold that over the front and you overlap it onto the vinyl that you've got on the bottom so let's do that for both sides okay now we're not left with nothing but the four most tricky pieces of vinyl I think I may have ever plotted for any kit that I've ever done and that is the pieces that make up this little arch I can see why they didn't want to do that as a decal because, frankly, it's a monster. I tried to make it work with one piece of vinyl and it wouldn't because it needs to twist and stretch in so many different uh, directions at the same time as to become very uh, almost impossible. So what, uh, what I've decided to do, what I've found that works best, is to divide it in four sections and lay each uh, quarter on individually. So let me get these down and uh, I will show you how maybe how the back half goes okay that's not too shabby that went on pretty easily uh, took a couple you know uh, running stabs at it before it finally went down right but that went pretty good so let's do the back part now it's just a question of taking one of these halves and lining it up with Sorry, lining it up with the edge of the uh, piece that is um, gunmetal there, which will obviously need to be repainted, and giving yourself just a little bit of white reveal between the gunmetal part and the blue, and then wrapping that around to where the point and the... Um, to where the front of it ends down here where the point's supposed to be and then hoping the other piece lines up against it yeah like I say it might take a few it might take a few stabs to get it uh, in the right position the first time out but uh, 
it does work, but don't be don't be uh, don't be ashamed. Don't be surprised if you don't have to go back in after all this is done and hand paint and touch up that that angle. I mean, most people wouldn't even try doing this with an airbrush. They would just paint it in by hand. So uh, doing this with an airbrush uh, is not always the last tool you're going to touch. It's going to you're going to go back in there and and caress those angles a little bit with the uh, um, with a hand brush. It's just I'm trying to make this a little bit easier to do um, with an airbrush. Okay, the important blue bits are covered with the painting masks and now I want to get some gray paint on here as soon as possible because it, this particular vinyl is not as thin as other vinyls. The adhesive is not as strong, which in most places and instances would be a good thing. But here you have a problem because it doesn't want to hold these tight bends very well. Uh, it works better on flat surfaces than it does when you bend it over something. So uh, I just went through and did a quick press down, make sure everything was stuck. And now I am going to uh, put some white paint on it. And for the last few minutes, I've just been going over the uh, pylons and the cells with the uh, darker accent temp textures. And then... Uh, I'm going to let this dry for a good long while, and then when I come back to it, I will do a, um, a highlight white pass, and um, then I'll do a blending. Okay, my friends, it's time for an inconvenient truth. Uh, I would love nothing more than to include templates in this set for painting the engines, um, the top of the warp engines, but I've tried it nine ways till Sunday, and it's just not coming out in a way that I would feel comfortable uh, passing on to other people. So uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to back up and say this is one instance where uh, plain old tape is better than vinyl for these bits. And the problem is, is the thickness of the vinyl and the amount of adhesive on the back of them, even this real thick, even the, the real sticky stuff, will not bend around the tight radius that you want it to bend around and stick. What works best is good old plain old yellow tape because you uh, you lay the yellow tape down and you trim that straight line with an exacto. just take it down the gully and it'll give you this nice straight line that goes all the way down and it is a better, cheaper, quicker, easier solution that you will like the results of better anyway than to uh, try to include that in a vinyl set so um, just like sometimes I say it's still better to use decals for certain areas of a model than to try to paint it it is also better in this instance to do, just use plain old straight painters tape and trim it in place so let's get these grays painted and then I need to touch this back up where I've scratched a little bit off the inside and then we'll have these bits done. Okay, moment of truth time. Let's see how these turned out. Let me take the tape off of them. Okay, I gotta say I'm very, very happy with how these turned out. I've got the, uh, the gray stripe, stripes, plural, going down and the uh, blue on either side. Paint blue on the inside and gray on the outside. Now these are ready to be installed. And now it's time to finish up or do another round at least on the uh, pylon sets. Uh, I've got to do a white highlight against this and then one gray blending coat and it'll be ready for uh, to remove the tape tonight and uh, final construction. And here you can see with the white pass uh, you can see some highlights there in white. Now, yes, it looks blocky and contrasty and ugly. But right now, we're going to do the last blending coat, which is that very, very light gray. And that's going to knock all that down. And then after that dries, we get to remove the masks and see the lovely blue paint underneath. Won't that be fun? The texture has been toned down and... Um, now I'm going to let this dry for about an hour and then go back in and start peeling off the masks. And here it is, ladies and germs, the 
warp engine slash pylon assembly with all of the mask removed. Now, I won't lie to you because, you know, why do I need to? But I did go in and touch with a paintbrush some little bits of overspray. But the thing is, I didn't have to paint all of that by hand. That's just the masking removed from the blue underneath. And particularly that weird shape on the hump there. Now I need to paint. I need to repaint the gunmetal on those rib that ribbed piece that goes underneath of the hump. But I wanted you to see this before I did that that uh, bit of painting. Okay, here's a very close to finished look at how the engines will appear. I still have to glue all that together. That's just sitting on top of each other, and I. Haven't decaled anything yet, but that's what the pylons and engines look like. And there's the body over there and the saucer over here. It's sort of like the Scarecrow from the Wizard of Oz. I've got pieces all over. All I need to do is put these three main uh, sub-assemblies together and we will be ready for decaling. Um, I do think I want to glue them together before I decal, only because that will help me, I hope, give uh, better um, gripping areas for putting the decals on when the ship is all together. Plus, I can put it on the stand and uh, let it dry that way. But that's going to wrap us up for this week. This should be fairly easy to finish uh, come Monday, and uh, then Tuesday we'll be doing decals. Tuesday is also the day I'm supposed to get my carpeting in. Yay! Uh, so we'll have big, colorful things to show you in the other room as well. <coughs> And that's going to wrap up another happy week here at Aztec Dummy. Uh, getting the Excelsior very close to being finished. Just like I said, some uh, sub-assembling into major assembling to, to do. And then uh, I'll probably accomplish that on Monday. And that'll leave Tuesday or Wednesday to do the decaling, depending on how distracted I get with the carpeting. All of the paint is done in the other room. I think I showed you that already. Nothing... Too exciting. I'm going to do a little bit of colorful stuff this weekend uh, that I will start next week's report out with. And uh, out with, is that proper? I'm sorry. Um, but uh, until next week, when big colorful things will be happening all over the place, be good. Be good to each other. Uh, have a good time. Have a nice week. And I will see you here next time. President Frito took eight wives and had a total of 32 kids. 32 of the dumbest kids ever to walk the earth.